Hi guys, welcome back to Full Stack Adda. Today video is about logging. So how to implement logging in a spring based application. First of all, what is the need of logging? Logging is very very essential component for every application. So after development, we deploy our code into some server. So if something goes wrong, we need a way to check what went wrong. We can do that by checking the logs. Spring Boot uses Apache Commons logging for all its internal logging. But we can use our own whatever we need for our application related logs. Spring Boot provides default configuration for uh, Java util logging. It comes with JDK by default and log4j2 and logback libraries. By default, Spring Boot logs only to the console and does not write logs to the files. So we need to set the log level. So what kind of log messages we need to write to the file or to, to see in the console. There are about uh, six log messages and one of log level trace debug info warn error fatal and off off means you don't see any logs it's come it is turning off the logs so here we can see the log levels are also from the lowest to highest level trace is the lowest level and fatal is the highest level you also see all in some online tutorials but in java uh, you don't see all log level if we go with the spring boot default logging mechanism without using specifying any other external uh, uh, logging library so we can specify the log file location using the two spring boot provided properties one is logging.file.path another one is logging.file.name so the difference is in the first one we specify the path up to the directory we don't specify the log file name and in the second one we specify the complete absolute path of a log file i have already created a cred app in the last video so for the same project i am adding these properties if I open the application dot properties here, I set the root logging level info. It means so info messages one error fatal all logs will be printed, and if there are any tran trace and debug logs, those will be ignored. We don't see them. So let me run. is starting yeah it has been started I already opened this file in the notepad let me show you yeah here we can see the logs are being written to the file so another property file dot path And here we don't specify the log file name, we just specify till folder. So I have added since I have added the developer tool, so it automatically restarts. And if I go and check that location, here we see a new log file is created with the name spring.log. If I open and see here also we can see the logs are being written to this file. So how to write the log messages in our uh, classes. So to write the log messages first of all we need to create the logger object. So for that one so we can actually create in two ways. So one is by calling the logger factory 
get logger method and this way and another way is lombok also provides an annotation slf 4 j uh, using this way also we can create the logger object so here we have the save employee method here the first log if you add the lombok uh, annotation you need to call with uh, log variable log dot info method and if you create your own logger object with whatever the name you specify you can call log methods using that reference variable let me call this api from postman we got success response if we go and check yeah here we can see our logs are being written to the file now we will learn how to implement logging using log logback in a spring boot app log logback is an open source java logging library provided by qas.ch company and so to start with the log logback we need to create either logback.xml or logback-spring.xml under resources folder spring team recommends to create the file name with the uh, logback hyphen spring dot xml we now need to add the logback dependency spring boot automatically adds it let me show you a demo how to implement logback in a spring boot app inside resources folder we create a xml file with the name logback hyphen spring dot xml and here we can we specify the property it's a kind of variable so here what we are doing is we are declaring the log path using the property tag and the log path location is slash logs and the file name my app dot log and the logs pattern so for console so i'm just printing the time log level logger name and the particular log message and all are separated by hyphen and the this json log pattern it is to write the log messages to a file so this is useful when we are integrating with the elk stack kibana so kibana or splunk we actually prepare the logs in a json format so in this json object i have the log msg variable for that i am appending the percentage msg so it will actually write the whatever the actual log message to this variable and exception variable for this one percentage ex and these two last two user id and process time these are custom variables so for this you need to append percentage x and the this particular variable i will show you how to insert values for these two variables and then followed by one appender so this appender so we define to write the logs to a file using the rolling file appender and here we specify the log path and here we we are specifying the rolling policy so here we specify the archived log file notation and the maximum logging file size 10 mb and the overall uh, that particular location size up to 20 gb and the maximum days up to 60 days we need to keep the logs and the encoder using the here we are attaching the that json log pattern which we prepared here and console appender so using this we actually write the logs in the console and for our 
packages we are actually setting the log level info if you want we can also change this log level to debug or error something and the root level log we are setting as a info and for this one we are actually setting the two appenders and here I have one controller and here I am creating the logger object with the factory method get logger and so here there I took actually two custom variables user id so for that one I am actually getting the user id from the header so I used spring annotation request header and that value I am adding to the MDC so this MDC it is from the self 4 j so if we add this variable value to this user id it will automatically adds to this log message to this one and I am just print getting the current timestamp and adding a welcome log and for string variable I am assigning hi welcome back string message and here I am just manually introduce some delay so that uh, to calculate the overall process time I am just introducing one second delay and in the next line I am taking another timestamp and in this line I am actually calculating the overall process time and that value I am assigning to the process time and at last I am adding the last uh, log message let me run and show you right click run as spring boot app it is starting yeah it has been started so our log file will be logs directory it will be inside uh, C, C drive here we have the logs folder and here we have the log file yeah so we can see the logs here application has been started and this user id and process name process time by default these are empty now let me hit the api from postman i'm clicking on send button yeah I have received the response from the API and if I go and check the log file now I have the new logs so for the new logs here I can see the user ID and process time values are being populated so I have just added few fields here with some custom fields user ID and process time but we can also add more logging fields based on our project requirements like uh, some unique uh, logging id so using that we can actually trace the each request uh, sequence of logs and also we can print the uh, client sent request and also client whatever the headers client sent all, all those uh, headers we can print and also the response what you are sending that also we can print to do that we can actually write a filter and within that filter we can actually print uh, request headers and response so this is all for today's video if you like the content please like the video and subscribe my channel thank you